Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. It's Friday, TGIF. You made it through another week. Uh, it's kind of a special week for us here in the States. It's a long weekend because the 4th of July falls on Monday. And because of that, it's kind of a long weekend. And, you know, uh, this is where they used to say all the amateurs are out. You're going to have a lot of people going on long trips and getting liquored up and whatnot so you have to be very careful if you're out on this weekend driving especially it can be a little crazy um got a few things to talk about today traditionally the uh whenever we have a holiday weekend we don't know how viewership's going to be but we got a few things that i think you'll enjoy uh you know you have the time to watch it i know a lot of you have been enjoying the snoopy you know <laughs> when i was doing the uh the little snoopy thing when he was coming out and kind of you know, saying hello. Uh, I got to tell you, I kept losing my train of thought when trying to do my closing. I was, because uh, do, I'm doing this by myself, obviously. And uh, so a couple times I would do something and I would lose my train of thought. And I, it was just, I'll show you some bloopers at the end. It was pretty funny. Uh, first off, I want to show the, uh, start off today, the show, with uh, a couple people said, what's it like on your poor man's flea market? Now, the poor man's flea market, as you know, is uh, is when I go walking at night and I do my uh, look for garbage and take my exercise walk. Well, uh, I, last week was really good. I f saw some good things. Now, again, I do not take stuff because but I did pick up one item. But let me show you some of the cool things we saw along the way. And uh, I took you and, and filmed it at night. So let's check that out. Now, when I go walking at night, I usually go between 12 and 2 a.m., so the streets are just about empty, And uh, but you'd be surprised how many lights are still on in people's homes and whatnot, but uh, I always look for this, for shingles, of uh, which is uh, for sale, houses that are for sale, because within a couple weeks when a house is for sale, you're going to find great stuff in front of it, and here's a, uh, uh, an item that around the corner from me from a house that they're selling, and Look at this beautiful bicycle. There's nothing wrong with this bike. As a kid, we would have grabbed that in a minute. And here around the corner, another house they're selling. Look at this bike. And, and look at these rims. I've never seen these type rims before. These tires are Wander from, I believe, China. But look at those rims. They're like a high profile, low profile. I don't know what they are. Aerodynamic. <laughs> around the corner, we find another house. Uh, but this one here, it, you notice there's a couple of lamps. And let me tell you one thing about lamps. Whenever you see lamps thrown out with the bulbs, I can guarantee you at least one or two of the bulbs both work. And with this one, no exception, both bulbs work. Grab them. Uh, look at this nice PVC bench. Isn't that pretty? And it's like, it was like brand new. I don't know why they were throwing that out. It was solid and everything. And normally what I would normally go for, if I see a vacuum cleaner or shampoo or something, I grab the cord. Look, my nemesis was out before me. He beat me to this one. I wonder what he does with the cords. And But they, there was the normal stuff out, like here is the uh, gas blower. Uh, over here is a nice end table. If you want to refinish that, that's nice. My girlfriend actually yelled at me for not picking this mirror up. She says, oh, that's a nice mirror. Why didn't you get that? But I'll tell you the one thing, probably the, one of the nicest things I've seen in a long time. Look at this grill. This grill is in mint condition. It's, I mean, look at this. They, I think they even cleaned it before they threw it, or if it wasn't used hardly at all. But uh, what a beautiful grill, huh? Obviously, didn't take that, but all it needed was a tank, and I have one of those. But again, I don't grill, so isn't that cool? Okay, so this was my great find of all the cool things I saw. This I wound up picking up. And, you know, the Internet, as great as the Internet is, it did kill off a few things like like uh, snail mail. You know, a lot of people used to mail now. You just use email. Uh, another thing it killed off, amateur radio, pretty much it killed that off. You know, we used to enjoy going on amateur radio. And, and uh, books. You know, the books have gone down a lot because a lot of people read their information online and don't have these books cluttering up the house anymore. But... This one here is called the Modern Family Advisor from 1964. Look at the size of this book. And uh, it just is packed with all sorts of fantastic information. And it's illustrated. So let me show you what some of the things that's on here. In this book, it shows you, you know, uh, it talks about how to keep your home and family health and Family security, love and marriage, personal appearance, which is a lot of people can learn from, uh, household management, art of cooking, 
educating your family, self-improvement, careers and professions, uh, social activity, etiquette, etiquette. That's a big one. I used to teach that in the Scouts. Leisure and recreation, uh, quick speaking foreign language guide, hobbies, come on, hobbies, and knowing ourselves. So, uh, you know, you would come into this book, and this was a, a book that if you were going to start a family or something, what a great reference to, uh, to, to be able to go to a book and look up and know certain things, especially, let's say you, uh, you might have a physical ailment. Here they talk about uh, beauty and good grooming, like how to apply makeup and put makeup on. Now, this is something you should be taught from your your uh, mother or, you know, something like that. But a lot of times, you know, you might be in a situation where you don't have that person to be able to tell you. Great reference. Um, here we have not just first aid, but also uh, how to deal with certain ailments that you might have and how your body works and just packed full of information. What a great book. How could you not, how could you let this, this wealth of information go into the recycle? Not me. This will be read in the house. Okay, for today's project, I thought we would tackle this. Now, a lot of you caught this. This I got from the dollar table. And a lot of you saw that and said, wow, that's an interesting hammer. And I do have one similar. Let me dig Here it out. Here is a similar hammer I have. Look at this guy. Now, this one here. Now, what these were, these hammers were most times made by uh, students in a uh, metal school or whatever. And, and, you know, again, I picked this one up and an expensive one cleaned it up. And I've been using this. I put this in service. And these were hammers that were made uh, in shop class usually years ago by students. And now, unfortunately, I never attended a shop class. And uh, one of my big regrets, my mother sent me to... <laughs> Catholic school for business school. And I, I really, I used, my friends would come home and go, look at this. I made this. I said, oh, why can't I do that? Why can't, you know, anyway. So I saw this one here for a dollar and I said, somebody, some poor guy made this hammer. And first of all, if you make something, never, ever sell it. You know, you keep that until you die. So hopefully this guy, you know, passed on and, and that's why it was, put at the dollar table or something. So we're going to fix this up. And, uh, you know, you could see here. And this was screwed in, okay? Now, whenever you screw a hammer in, there's a couple things you have to do. You usually have to uh, pin it because a hammer will not... Uh, but, again, they're trying to teach different things in shop class. They're trying to teach threading, turning, knurling. Uh, you can see this was done on a lathe. And then they, they teach angle cuts here and probably hardening or whatever. And, you know, maybe certain grind cuts on the mill. So it's meant to, to educate, not really be a great hammer. But I said, we could do better. We could do better. We can, this little edge here is horrible. And you could see this one here was a, a stepped edge. They did a better job. But, uh, you know, the knurling is eh, not too nice. But we'll see what we can do. I want to just make this into a user hammer because, believe it or not, they do come in handy around the shop. And I know you want to see it, so let's get to okay. it. Okay, now my, uh, I'm not trying to remake the hammer here. I'm just trying to clean it up to make a user. But I think it was threaded in both sides because it looks like there might be a little bit of a thread caught. Now, I don't know. I can't get it out. But there's a look. This looks like maybe it was tried to be clamped or something or a wrench was put on there. I don't know. We'll clean that up later. I was able to get the knurling pretty much back with the wire brush. I didn't hit this with the wire brush because we're going to have to use the flap disc anyway to get it nice. So let's put that in the Stanley 700 and straighten this out. Now, grinding this angle on the back of the hammer is always difficult because you got to get it normal. So first thing people are going to see if it's off angle. You can really pick it up with the naked eye. So I like to take a square and just run a scribe mark or a, a marker across the back. And that gives you a guideline. And now you could grind right up to that line and you'll have a, uh, a straight line across. Just bring the 
flap sander or grinder, and now you have a reference point, and it really works well. Now I do the same thing with the front because I want those uh, knockoffs there not to go too far back. You know, you, you could think you could do it by eye, but you really can't. It's very difficult to do. We'll take all the rest of this off with the belt sander, but uh, this is now, this is unorthodox, but what I do is I, I wedge the sander, the flap disc, uh, against the vise on my, <laughs> my body, and I just run the punches around, and that knocks off the edges. I find that works for me, but you have to be very careful when you do something like this, but I, uh, I like it. It's called Dancing with the Devil. There you can see we have our rough grind. Now we'll go over to the belt sander and we'll, we'll blend everything in. First, I want to knock off the corner on that handle. Now I did everything first with a 80 grit belt as a rough belt and then I went over it again with a 321 belt to give everything the smoothness that, it, uh, that you need. So twice you have to do everything. Now I'm mixing up some two ton epoxy. I'm gonna epoxy the, the threaded handle in. And uh, the main thing is you got to clean it real good with acetone and uh, denatured alcohol before you put the epoxy on. Now, you know my favorite part. Remember what this shop hammer looked like before we started. And we're calling this project done. You know something when I was doing this, I kept thinking about this. The guy, RIP, whoever made it. The poor guy who made this thing, and probably in shop class, he put so much time and effort to get it right, and we came home. You know how you see, you show your father, say, hey, Dad, look, it's, I made this. And he's like, you made this? You go, yeah, I made it in shop class. You go, wow, nice job. So I, you know, I tried to keep it as original to his design as I could. You could see here, fixed up the face. You know, face was all mushroomed. Uh, what I, one thing I did, you know, I... I cleared out you know uh, made this nice and flush over here i did a nice shine on all the way around you know i kept there's only two pits in it up here i didn't want to take them too far out because it would change the profile but you know uh, this here this corner done all the way it was and, and then i softened the whole thing out i mean this is like just kind of a little bit fixed up you know shaft is done up i took that edge out of here that was just horrible and it, but still kept the original knurling that he had, cleaned it up nice, polished out the back here, right? What a beautiful little hammer. Now, that epoxy will uh, hold. I, I've never seen, you know, especially with all them threads in there, I can never see this thing, you know, it's not like it's a sledgehammer you're going to be banging. This is meant for, you know, tapping punches and small things like that. But you could see here, came out real nice. Uh, tribute to the boy or man. Rest in peace, whoever made this. And all you other guys who were lucky enough to have shop class while I was sitting in in uh, art <laughs> and business administration and all them other stupid classes. But this one's in the can. Okay, so in closing, uh, I want to wish my good friend Jim a very happy birthday over in the UK. Hand tool restoration. Jim just turned 50. And uh, it's a great age, you know, uh, for me anyway. I can start to see things clear after I hit 50. I think I was in a fog for the first 50 years. But um, so uh, happy birthday belated to you, Jim. And uh, I want to wish you all a, a nice weekend. I hope you have a great weekend if you're celebrating the 4th here. Uh, one of my favorite holidays, except it's a war zone here. So, but you, I will have a video up on the 4th. So. I hope you have a great weekend. Take care now. Be safe. Bye-bye.
these tools were no joke. They were really uh, well designed, and I really do appreciate the fact that Dan would bring those in to, so that we could show everybody and and uh, and have a closing special thanks to Dan Semmel for uh, for loaning us those uh, terrific.